So House of the Dragon's sixth episode is the first uh, big time jump. We've had some smaller time jumps, but this one is a 10-year time jump and basically ages up a significant portion of the cast, introduces a bunch of new characters in the form of children, uh, the children of Viserys and Alicent, and the children of Rhaenyra and, <laughs> well, and Harwin Strong, uh, but publicly Rhaenyra and her husband, Laenor. Uh, Velaryon. Uh, of course, Lenor is gay, and they don't actually make babies together. So she has taken her lover, Howard, uh, Harwin Strong, the son of um, Sir Lionel Strong, the Hand of the King, and a uh, member of the, the Gold Cloak, so, you know, an ally of Daemon. And it overall, really seems like a really nice, really good person. Uh, he's the one that carried... Rhaenyra off from the the disastrous wedding a wedding feast last last week, when um, Sir Kristen Cole beat Lenor's lover Joffrey to death um, in a brutal and horrible scene. But I guess him carrying her off like that sparked something because now ten years later they have several children together, including the newborn baby, who he who Lenor names Joffrey, sort of as a homage to his to his long now long dead lover. He has he has a new a new lover now and friend and they are Lenor and his 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 friend are off gallivanting and merrymaking and playing around pretty much just living the life of a rich noble not really taking anything seriously. And it's a point of contention between her between him and uh, Rhaenyra that uh, that he's kind of not not there for for her when he needs to be. Um, but she has Harwin uh, until things go wrong and Harwin is sent away or taken away by his father. He ends up getting in a fight with Kristen during a training session where Kristen is clearly favoring Alicent's sons and uh, almost picking on either ignoring or then picking on uh, Rhaenyra's sons and then <clears throat> uh, makes a makes a comment like, oh, you sure care about these boys, almost like, a, you know, almost like a father. And he gets really mad because he's defensive about that. And it kind of, unfortunately, he loses his cool because it's basically an admission. And this is a pretty serious accusation, of course, if if Rhaenyra's sons are not actual true-born sons, then they're not heirs to, to, her, to, you know, to the Iron Throne. They're bastards. So uh, that's one of the big points of conflict in this episode. Alicent firmly believes and makes it quite obvious that she believes that they are bastards. Uh... Viserys doesn't want to believe, even though I think deep down he knows also, you know, Lenor is black and they're not at all black and they have dark brown hair like Harwin Strong rather than the white hair that both Lenor and Rhaenyra have. So just, you know, <laughs> trust your lion eyes, right? Um, so this is kind of the central conflict of this episode. The episode is bookended again by last week. It was murders. There was a murder at the beginning and a murder at the end. The first, the first murder was Damon killing his wife, and the last was Sir Kristen Cole killing Sir Joffrey. Uh, this episode is bookended by births, uh, one that results in life and one that results in death. So we start with Rhaenyra's, uh, Rhaenyra giving birth to Joffrey and having to walk upstairs, all these stairs, to get to Alicent, who is, you know, demanded that the baby is brought before her right then and there. It's kind of a power play. <clears throat> Alicent has turned into a kind of a royal bitch at this point. Uh, pun intended. Uh, whereas Rhaenyra is far more likable. Um, you know, I think that they've kind of diverged, right? Uh, Rhaenyra has maybe become even more likable as an older character. She's more level-headed, less brash, wiser. Um, just a genuinely likable character all around, I'd say. Uh, whereas Alicent has become more and more, like, political she's really followed in her father's footsteps and we'll get to kind of where that leads in a minute um the second birth is lady lena uh she and damon have two children and she's pregnant with their third and uh very similar to uh viserys's first wife they they, they cannot <laughs> they just can't get the baby out and the doctor suggests cutting her open to possibly save the baby, but Damon doesn't want to have anything to do with that. I think he remembers all too well how that went down for his, for his, uh, brother. Um, and 
Interestingly, Lena takes matters into her own hands, knowing that the baby's not coming out and that she and the baby are going to die. She goes outside to her dragon, uh, Vagar. Is it Vagar? I might be getting that wrong. Um, well, I'll, well, whatever, you know, it's, it's the largest, it's the biggest dragon out there right now. Um, she goes out and she like screams at it, Jokaris, which means to breathe fire. And it kind of looks at her like, what are you talking about? But after a couple more times, uh, it burns her to death. And she dies that dragon rider's death that she's wanted. Uh, Damon comes running out, like yelling at her to stop. <clears throat> they have an interesting relationship. Like he clearly cares about her, but he's also very dismissive of her. He's just kind of a dick, <laughs> right? He ignores his kids. He certainly doesn't do much to comfort them after the death of his wife and their mother. Um, he kind of just wants, you know, he's kind of resigned himself to kind of just being out of Westerosi society. They are, they're living in Pentos and they've, he wants to take on basically this job <laughs> as being protector of the Penta, Pentos and he'll get, you know, land, estates and taxes and tribute and all this and basically be a wealthy mercenary, uh, which Lena didn't want. So uh, I, I kind of wish that whole storyline had been given a little bit more time, a little bit more room to breathe. We're just kind of, we get Lena and, and Damon dancing at the wedding feast, and then we jump ahead so far, and they've got kids, and they've got this interesting relationship, and then she's dead. This is one of the things, like, I don't hate it about House of the Dragon, but I always feel like, well, I wish we'd gotten a little bit more of this. I wish we'd gotten a little bit more of this relationship, and they built that out a little further, so that we cared more when Lena dies. Uh, this is also true of Harwin, who, um, whose brother... Uh, La Laris? Hold on. There's so many. La Lanus, I think. Uh, da, 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 da. Laris. Yeah, I was right the first time. Laris. Uh, Laris is a cripple. He is the not strong, strong brother. And he formed something of a friendship, an alliance with Alicent 10 years earlier. He's, you know, putting seeds of doubt into her, whispering into her ear, you know, he's a He's a schemer. He's he's probably a, the biggest schemer of them all. Much, much more diabolical than uh, Otto Hightower. So he is talking with Alicent, and she is kind of complaining that nobody's on her side. Uh, nobody listens to her about Rhaenyra. You know, even the, the king won't even accept Lionel Strong's resignation as hand. What, what on earth is she going to do? Well, Sir Laris takes this into his own hands <clears throat> and goes and finds some murderers and rapists and other ne'er-do-wells in the prison and frees them and cuts their tongues out so that they can not spill any secrets and sends them to Harrenhal when his father and brother go back and they burn down uh, the castle or the, the keep uh, with, with, with barred doors, killing both his father and brother in the process. And the, the episode actually ends on him sort of talking with Alicent, sort of describing like how children are just this thing that make you weaker. And he's quite scary and, a, and actually a pretty great bad guy. Uh, she seems quite shook by the whole thing. She says that this isn't what she wanted. Uh, you know, she, she never asked him to go and kill his family uh, to take out Harwin and, and the hand. <clears throat> and he says, I, I'm sure you'll find some way to repay me someday. Like... He's a scary guy, but a great character. Uh, ultimately, Rhaenyra decides that the Red Keep and King's Landing is not a safe place for her and her family, uh, and they depart for Dragonstone. Uh, she brings Leonor, all her children, dragons, etc., and they get out of there. And that's probably a smart move. Uh, she's she's seeing the cards stack against her, um, the murder of... I mean, they don't know it's a murder at, at this point, but the killing, the deaths of Harwin and... Lionel Strong, do not bode well for Rhaenyra. Um, so she's out. Uh, and things were going kind of badly before that, right? There was that training scene with Kristen Cole and obviously some tension between the boys. There's um, Aegon, is the oldest, and he's kind of a wild, doesn't give a shit about anything character. Like, Alicent's basically telling him, you need to be king or your, life's are, your lives are in danger. And he's like, but I don't want... He doesn't even care about being king. He's totally fine with Rhaenyra being in charge. But Alicent is planting that thought in his head. No, like you have to, you have to be king, uh, which you know it's basically, I mean, what, 
what is Al Allison's ultimate plan must be to, to kill Rhaenyra because there's no way she's letting Rhaenyra live if she thinks Rhaenyra wouldn't let her children live. Uh, Aemond is the scary one, though. The brother without a dragon, the brother that all, that all the other kids, including his own brother Aegon, but also uh, Jaceris and Luke, uh, the, the young sons of Rhaenyra, they all sort of pick on him because he doesn't have a dragon and because he's kind of a weirdo. Uh, he's the one that that I think... We should all be watching carefully. Uh, he 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 has a look about him. He's quite uh, quite wicked looking, and maybe pushed to to be quite a bad bad figure. Um, all the new children, you know, they, they they really definitely focus more on Allison's children, the uh, on Aegon and Aemond the most. Uh, they're older than both of Rhaenyra's sons, or all three of Rhaenyra's sons. Um, but I think, I'm not sure, like, I haven't seen the next episode. I've, I, I was able to watch all six right away, but I haven't seen episode seven. So I don't know if we're going to keep jumping like two or three years each episode. Uh, I don't know if or when there will be recasting of the children or if we get, we're going to have these, these aged children throughout the rest of the season and get aged up children in season two. I just don't know, but, um, really curious to find out. I thought this was a really good episode. I thought it was, um, quite powerful. I really like the new... I, I like Emma Darcy a lot as Rhaenyra. I think she does a great job as an older uh, Rhaenyra. And I thought um, Olivia Cook is... She plays a very unlikable Allison. And Emily Carey's Allison was mostly very likable. And now we see uh, the older and much more ruthless version of her with, with Olivia Cook's portrayal. Uh, and Kristen Cole's a total asshole. <laughs> He's really turned into like one of the most unlikable and shitty characters on the show. I mean, he's, he's, he's a great bad guy, but like he's, he's a, a real piece of work. At one point he calls Rhaenyra a very bad name. I'm not going to repeat it. And, uh, even Ali Alicent, who he's speaking with just gives him a look like, what the hell dude? <laughs> like you don't get to call the princess that. And he apologizes. Uh, so yeah, I, and, and Viserys is looking real old, but he's outlived all of our expectations. We all thought he was probably a gunner after episode five, but he's still alive. But he is the only thing protecting Rhaenyra right now from the forces arrayed against her. So when he's gone, well, we'll see. Uh, of course, she also has Daemon, but he's off in Pentos, so he's not really an available ally right now. Uh, curious to see where it all goes. Really enjoying it so far. Liking it a lot more than Rings of Power. It has an actual story with character development, and while I sometimes do think that it rushes a little bit, um, it's, I don't know if rushes is even the right word, but sometimes we don't get as much, you know, I would have liked to see more of Harwin and, and Rhaenyra, maybe a little more of Daemon and, and uh, Lena, but it still manages to pull off these powerful scenes. Um, the burning of Harrenhal, the, the, the burning of Lena by, by her dragon, these are powerful scenes, and, and boy, that scene of, of, of Rhaenyra walking up to Allison's chambers and, and Viserys coming in just completely oblivious of what a trial that must have been for his daughter. Just kind of la-di-da-di-da, -da, wanting to believe that everything's fine. Head in the clouds, head in the sand. <laughs> Same with the training scene. He's just kind of ignoring all the, the tension and the shittiness down below. He's really living in denial for his, his old age. So, And I get that. Denial's com more comfortable than accepting hard truths. So... Anyways, thanks for watching, thanks for uh, liking and subscribing, and let me know what you think of the show so far in the comments. Peace!